Welcome back, guys. How are you? Johnny Gonzo, our man with the plan on the islands. Yeah, man, all good. Sitting here. Stefano. All good, all good. Are you sure? Are you over dengue? Yeah, completely. <laughs> totally, though. Totally over. The diet was good. Fantastic. <laughs> Damn, okay, audience. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our first show, which was a high level look at the DeFi space. Um, as you know, I've been a Bitcoiner for, for four years, but clearly now having a, a closer look at what's happening in the DeFi space. Stefano, our gold chain wearer, thought I'd uh, whack one on today. Ready? Is yeah, it? it's no. bigger than yours. Well, let me see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've no words. Damn. Uh, there we That's go. fucking I'm bling. Not, I'm not going completely shit coin, guys. Bling, bling, yo. Still rocking, still rocking the Bitcoin well, merch. I, I don't use know. case <laughs> to buy alts. Yeah. So, look, we're today, uh, <laughs> reasons to watch this show are, in a nutshell, we're going to show you <laughs> That looks the, ridiculous, that necklace. This is a Bitcoin necklace, so don't you dare. If, look, you're banned. This will be the last time you'll be seen Johnny on the show, so uh, we'll, 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 let, we'll let him talk. Uh, um, we're going to show you how to set up wallets, the, the absolute basics. You know, even someone like myself that's been in the space for a long time, sort of... <laughs> Why are you laughing, Stefano? I cannot uh, take you seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're the one that rocks a gold chain every week, mate. At least First, one. it's silver. Second, it doesn't have like a chain... A, 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 a thing like going down is a simple thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll be giving away a Bitcoin uh, chain. To make sure you subscribe. <laughs> First giveaway. Yeah, um, and and actually, a Bitcoin sock is going to be part of one? the. Uh, well, yeah, I can't find the other one. Nice. Might as well give away that one. Actually, we we do have some amazing giveaways coming up, uh, including a prepaid crypto card already loaded with crypto. We'll be announcing that early next week so more uh, reasons no to way. subscribe so get on in there people uh and thank you to those uh new subscribers we're, we're growing quite rapidly but listen back to why we're here today guys um we're going to show people how to uh the basics of a wallet setup and how to acquire some of these um some of these DeFi coins that many of which actually aren't on exchanges so we're going to be looking at uniswap specifically Mm -hmm. um, now, I always fail to enable screen sharing, and I think I've done that again. So let me just do that now, guys. And Stephen, I'm going to throw it over to you. Shouldn't I be the one screen sharing? Yeah, yeah, but it's stupid, I have to share a screen before I can enable you. So you should be good now. Okay, so, so I'm going to let you do the talk and sunshine. If you can uh, help the newbies with what sure. can be a, a very nervous process. Sure. So, can you see the screen first you of all? Obviously, mask. crypto wallet and gateway to blockchain apps. So uh, the the easiest possible way to jump into of all of these is to do that via MetaMask. So how do you install a MetaMask? Uh, you simply go to metamask.io and then you click on either download happier or uh, download now. So either of the, of the two ways. You have different options. So you can either do that for the Chrome browser. It's an extension, it's a plugin. Uh, you can download that for iOS or for Android, so it works on mobile. That's but very that's handy if you plan on tipping a glass of tea into your laptop, apparently, uh, Jordan. No doubt. Right. I had to go through the whole MetaMask restart, re-importing everything the last day. What a pain yeah, in the ass. It's, it's a classic. It's yeah. a classic to do. Um, but one also advantage of, uh, of that is like obviously means having a little bit more security in uh, in the fact that like you can download your your passwords, your keys, uh, your stuff, and so like we're we're gonna get into like all of those stuff, obviously, because uh, it's it's better to like show people how to do things that uh, just like talking at least like this time that we can uh, provide all the information. Yeah. So. Uh, if once you have decided like how you want to go about this, uh, let's assume that you want to go like with the Chrome browser, you just like, click on install MetaMask for Chrome and you're going to see like the installation of the pop-up and the plugin. 
Um, other options could actually be to use Mozilla, so the Firefox browser or the Brave browser. Now, I'm going to use the Brave browser as an example simply because like, the Brave browser has MetaMask already pre-installed in, uh, in the browser. So it's a little bit easier. You have to uh, skip the, the part of like adding the, the pop-up. But on the other side, you will have to download Brave and start using a new browser. So up to you which one you prefer. Um, and you also get crypto rewards for using Brave. Oh yeah, so just like one thing, one bracket on that, as you can see up here, this is a notification. This is the advertisement that you got on, uh, on Brave. And what you do is that like by enabling this, by allowing people, uh, the system to actually push these little pop-ups, you get a reward with uh, BAT tokens once a month. Uh, you don't have to open that, you don't have to do anything. You can simply just like click on close and uh, it still count. Uh, now, you. Just a bracket on that. You don't really make a lot. You probably like make around like a couple of dollars here and there, but uh, it's free money, so why not? Um, one thing, so we're gonna put like all the links in uh, in the description, so you don't have to like write it down in anything. But just like either if you're using Chrome, you are gonna have like the URL for the Chrome browser. If you want to install that on mobile, you're gonna have like that option. We're also gonna put like the Brave browser link if you want to go like in in that direction on on that side. Once you have installed that, the system is basically going to ask you to like set up your passwords and, and all of those things. While for Brave, you basically have like this little icon up here. You will press on that, you click on like reward settings, and then like on the top over here, you have like crypto wallets. Once you click over there, you will see your wallet. Now, I obviously prefer a wallet already with some ETH inside and so on, but uh, that's basically like your, your wallet in, in place. Before anything, if you're new to this, click on this circle over here and go on settings. Once you're in settings, click on security and privacy and reveal seed words. Now, what is going to happen is that you're going to click there. It's going to ask you to insert the password that you just decide to use for your wallet. And it's going to appear like a series of different words. Save them. 100% save them. Because if you lose them, if you lose your laptop, if you lose the, the access to the wallet in whatever way, by using those words, you will be able to regain access to that. And so you're not going to lose all your Stephano, stuff. On that, well, proper, not... yeah, proper OPSEC is to not save them, but to actually write them down on yes. paper. Because if your computer gets hacked, those words can be found on your computer, right? Yeah. Yes. Guys, do so, you think it's also worth us clarifying that you, you, you have a password to, to get into these wallets? The seed words are effectively, if you forget that password, uh, would, would be one, one use case. Or you trash your computer and you need a new machine. Yeah. It did. It's basically like it's, a, it's an option to restore the access to, yeah. to the wallet if for whatever reason you're not capable to, yeah. uh, to enter in that wallet anymore. Yeah. So once you've done all of that, uh, the first thing to do is basically like to load your wallet. So once you're going to be like on, uh, on your wallet, uh, you basically like will see either your account here or in the case of like if you're using the Chrome browser, you will see a little pop-up appear and you will still see uh, account one. Now, I've renamed that in this specific case, but otherwise instead of saying art forking, it would say account one. What you want to do is you want to get your address. Now, this is very simple on that side because the only thing that you have to do is put your arrow on top of your address and simply click with the mouse and it's gonna like copy the address. From there, you wanna go on whatever exchange you're using. So totally free of, uh, of doing that. And then like when you are clicking on like withdraw, when he's gonna ask you like on which address you wanna withdraw your, your ETH, you're gonna copy the, you're gonna paste the address that you just copied uh, over here. So you're gonna do whatever process your exchange requires, which can be like verified uh, emails, uh, verified um, uh, 2FA, uh, I don't know, it depends on like which exchange you're using. 
uh, once the process is going to start, you're obviously going to wait uh, for the, the time that the exchange is taking to, to transfer the ETH. And at some point, you are going to see your balance on your wallet. So that's the, the, the second step complete because you have loaded. Um, question, Stefano. Um, this is, you, you, you couldn't move BTC to, to a MetaMask wallet? Or no, 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 no. This is only for um, Ethereum and ERC20 tokens. Okay. So it doesn't work for BTC, it doesn't work for Bitcoin Cash, uh, uh, Bitcoin SV. It doesn't work for other cryptos like um, um, Ripple um tron uh steam hive you name it like if it's not on the ethereum blockchain this is not going to work okay so generally if you're generally in order or any other project and you don't have eth you need to get some ethereum to move it to metamask uh as your first sort of port of call okay correct generally if you have you see the address with the zero at the beginning that indicates an erc20 token So once you are there, uh, you have your MetaMask as installed and you have the funds. Now, at that point, uh, there are two ways of, uh, of going around this. The first one is, let's assume that you want to buy a token, a DeFi token from uh, a very famous project, like uh, something that everybody is talking about that is easy to, to find, like... Uh, maker or uh, land or, or things like that basically so one way of doing that is to go on uniswap and so for that again links are going to be in the description but the url is app.uniswap.org swap and you're going to see like this interface now in you, this specific sorry, sorry jordan can i just get you to mute yourself just for a second while we're doing these technicalities oh, yeah. you had a bit of background noise there thanks mate sorry now, in, uh, in this specific example, uh, the wallets are already connected because you can see like up here on the top right that it says one ETH, which is exactly my balance that I had over there. And it's kind of like show me the beginning of, uh, of my address, which if I'm checking is exactly the same one as uh, I had on, uh, on my wallet uh, interface. Now, once you're going to like log in, uh, not log in, it's not correct. You don't have to log in or insert anything. Um, once you visit this URL, the system is not going to be connected automatically. So here, where right now there is enter an amount, there is going to be a bottom that says like connect wallet. You're just going to click there and the system is going to like show you a pop-up through MetaMask where you will basically have like to connect the wallets. It's pretty straightforward. It's not going to be difficult. Uh, there is no transaction that is happening at this point. You're just connecting the wallet. You're allowing Uniswap to interact with your MetaMask wallet. Right. Now, once you're here, uh, obviously your, your default setup is going to be ETH. And below, you have the option of like selecting a token. So you can click over there and you find some pretty famous uh, tokens like BAT, for example, uh, which is the one that is being used Right now, Ampliforth, which is one that a lot of people are talking about, and which is Argon uh, for the uh, DAOs. Um, 0x BTC, this is like the wrapping BTC from uh, 0x, the, the project. Um, DAI and, and so on, basically. You can find like whatever uh, you are interested in, uh, just clicking on something, and then the system is going to allow you to kind of like entering on that. Okay. Well, so Stefano, some of those tokens, I mean, some of the bigger ones are on exchanges. So if you're already on an exchange and if that's where you're stupidly keeping all your crypto, you, you can actually buy some of these tokens with, on Binance or, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the other exchanges. But this is an actual wallet, isn't it? As opposed Correct. to an exchange. And it also gives you the ability to buy quite a, well, a large number of these other projects we'll, we'll be talking about that aren't currently on exchanges. That would be the second main reason. Yes, like for example, if you if you want to buy like uh, I don't know zero x BTC, uh, I personally don't know any exchange that that would have that. So if you want to have like wrap BTC, that that's one example. However, like what what you're mentioning is like you also have the option that for example some of the projects are not going to be listed here. Yeah. Now there are obviously a lot as you can see we're we're keep scrolling like you you have so many. 
Yeah. But let's say that you want to like, for the example per se, let's say that I want to look like at a token that I cannot find here, but I heard somewhere and so on. Yeah. So the easiest way of doing that is obviously like to go to CoinGecko. Now CoinGecko is basically the equivalent of CoinMarketCap if, if you never heard about that. Why is CoinGecko pretty nice is because it lists projects uh, that might not be on CoinMarketCap. And so that's, that's always like a kind of a positive yep. thing. Now, and for it's the not example, owned by BNB. Huh. And well, it's not coin, owned by Binance. Yeah, that's, that's true. Coin, coin market <laughs> cap. But Binance both coin market cap. That's true. So one thing for that, like I, I find like this project, like this DeFi project, which is not uh, on, the, on the Uniswap. And so you must use like this process on CoinGecko. Uh, so for, for the sake of that, obviously, it's called... Uh, Statera, and so like you can see like over here. Now, if I'm going on the page of the token per se, now I can see that the token is called STA. Again, for the examples, if the pop-up doesn't, okay. So for the sake of the examples, let's go back over here. The token is called STA, and it's not here. Like I cannot find that. So that's, that's exactly like the perfect thing for that. Now, if I scroll down on the page of CoinGecko, I can find like the volumes and like the exchanges that are being used for that. And I can see Uniswap over here. Now in the specific case, obviously like is the first one, uh, which is pretty good at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, what I wanna do is basically like clicking on the pair side. So STA ETH. Once I click over there, it's going to load the page and it's going to load now the token that before it was not possible to, to view. Yep. So pretty straightforward. Again, we're exactly like on the page where we can start uh, exchanging things now. So there's another way know, to do that. Hey, with the finding the ether scan address. Yeah. But that, that's even like longer at that point, because like yeah. you, you need to like, even like if you're trying to do like that with SDA, for example, yeah, yeah, on the you guys scan. Are to slightly confuse me. So let's, let's not complicate okay. matters. Just, um, just, just forget about that. Cause like, it's a little bit like more complicated. This is like the, the easiest way of, uh, of doing that in, in my personal opinion on this. Um, so what you want to do at that point, is selecting so you're on the page you're ready to do the swap now we're going to look at pool later on but like right now you're on swap your account your wallet is connect you have your pair in place so everything well, is put ready some ethereum into metamask i'm um, yes yes opened yes, up absolutely. uniswap um you got a balance of one it's not something you need to to subscribe to or register for right it's just no, platform. no, no, no. yeah Okay. You don't have to register neither on MetaMask and neither on Uniswap. Yep. So you're probably our register on your exchange. That's probably like the only point where they have your uh, identity information. Yep. But neither MetaMask or Uniswap actually ask for, for anything oh, like okay. that. Maybe this is a good point to explain the difference between a swap and an exchange. That's true. So on, on an exchange, obviously, what, what is happening is that like there is a, a central um wallet that is owned by the exchange where the funds are transferred all the time now what you're seeing when you're trading on an exchange um it's not a real physical trade like there is no real exchange of cryptos that are happening that's like all digital the coins are staying in the wallet of the exchange the transfer happens only and exclusively in the moment on which you require a withdrawal of your coins. While on a swap system, what is happening is that the liquidity is run by smart contract. So all the tokens that you have a pair option in place are inside the smart contract. So they are decentralized and they're not owned by anybody. So when you are doing a swap, you are actually and in reality doing a real swap of cryptos. So you lose your ETH in this specific case and you're gaining the SDA, like they're gonna be in your wallet. So it's it's a hundred percent happening at that point. Those are kind of like the two the, the the big difference. That also means that an exchange can freeze your funds, can lock you out from from your wallets, um, from kind of like everything at that point. While on uh, on a on a sorry on a smart contract that's absolutely impossible.
like you can interact with that whenever you want, basically. The, the other major difference for the functionality is that, for instance, Stefano, can you click where it says ETH per STA there? Yes. Uh, so at all, maybe you got to put, put one ETH in there for from, um, and then maybe. it'll give you the price, right? So yes. on a traditional exchange, you set an order. You can set your price. You can say, okay, I only want to pay X amount for one STA. Mm -hmm. On Uniswap or on a DEX, you don't have that ability. You basically, you're buying an average price of all the exchanges. So there's which, no- Which can be a good thing, can't it? Because I've been involved in trades before where the, the liquidity on my particular exchange wasn't great. Um, the price of something was shooting through the roof, but somebody had, had put a, a big sell wall on my exchange and I got stuck. I couldn't even move. Uh, whereas something like this, you're not really trading as such, are you? You're not putting that, that price or here, here it is that instant sort of average of, of, of prices. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Right. Yeah. If you right. watch it maybe long enough, you'll see the price will change as the global average changes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like what I'm seeing here, guys. I'm a little confused on a couple of things, but we'll, you, I think you're describing it well. So for, uh, for the example, because uh, obviously after that, we're, we're, we're going to use also like the, the liquidity pool. Uh, so let's say that we want to like go <coughs> on, uh, on uh, a round number. So let's say that we want to get like 500 SDA, just like for, for the example per, per se, basically. Um, now it tells me like how much is going to be that in ETH and uh, it tells me also what is going to be like the impact on the price. So that average that Jonathan was talking about, it's going to increase by 0.01% once right. I'm going to do my trade. That's and stupid. also there is this little things here, which is like the liquidity provided fees, which is basically the amount of money that the people that are putting funds in the pools are going to receive. But we're going to get like into that for, for the time being, just like forget about that. So once I'm ready, let's say that I want to like buy 500 SDA, I just click on swap. Uh, it's going to like give me a recap on, on everything. I confirm on uh, my swap. It's going to open like the pop-up for uh, my Bray wallet or my MetaMask wallet whenever I, uh, I am. So now I'm on Brave, so it's going to be like on the top left uh, over here. If I'm a MetaMask, it's obviously going to be like on the top right on, uh, on the Chrome browser. It becomes I, a super um, important part. So here you can see gas fees. So I'm going to pay $3.32 of gas yeah, I fees. I don't see anything there. Oh, really? You see it, Sean? Uh, no. I, don't think, I think that that's like for privacy reason that it doesn't show that then. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, the, <laughs> then you, you need to use your imagination on this one. Security guys, I'm sorry. You, you're not going to see this thing. So basically what is happening is like now you're seeing like waiting for confirmation, I guess. Yeah. So you're seeing that thing that is like doing uh, the stuff over there. So what you are not seeing is basically like that right now I have a small pop-up open on, uh, on my browser that basically like is the, the MetaMask uh, recap of that transaction. So now my wallet is asking me to confirm the transaction. And so it tells me like the recap on how much money, how much ETH I'm going to send and he's also telling me how much I'm paying in gas price for that specific transaction. Like, remember, we're in the Ethereum blockchain. So every single time that I'm doing a transfer, I'm paying gas fees. Now, once I have select my gas fees and I'm like happy with everything and so on, I click on confirm. And now it's telling me the transaction has been submitted. So at this point, I just have to wait nothing else. For the example, if I'm going back on my wallet, I can now see that I have a pending transaction over here. And if I click on that transaction, I can speed that up so I can increase the gas fees. If I'm not happy, if it's not like going too fast or something like that, I can cancel that if for whatever reason I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do this thing anymore. And then I can click on this arrow. Now for privacy reason, I'm not going to do that. But if I click on this arrow, I'm going to see the TX of the transaction. So I'm going to go on Etherscan. It's going to show my wallet address, 
that is interacting with another wallet address and is telling me the estimation time of how long that specific transaction is gonna take. Now, just because like we're in the examples and so on, I'm gonna speed up the transaction a little bit, just like to simplify things a little bit. Hey Stefano. Yes. It doesn't give you that option when you're before you confirm on day? Uh it, it did give me that option, but then like I try and it was like uh, kind of like still setting up things. So because that's just, quite like, important. Like when you're doing Uniswap, you never want to go with the slow gas. No, absolutely you, not. You generally, you know, if it's like a to uh, contract interaction, you can go regular. But if you're trying to make a swap, you generally want to go with the fast gas. The reason why you want to do that uh, is because like if the transaction is not fast enough and the price Oy, is not being met. What's the MSTA? Correct. Right, uh, so just, just one thing on that, on like why the, the gas fees are actually important. So let's say that you want to like go cheap and you want to like spend the least amount possible. If the transaction is taking too long, the price between the two tokens is going to change. And therefore, the contract is not going to be able to match that price that you were expecting. So the transaction is going to fail, be right. rejected, and the entire gas fee that you have paid is going to be 100% spent and lost. So you oh, really? You actually lose the fee if it do doesn't go through and you've got to redo it? Yeah, because you're still paying the, the miners. Uh, to so the basically, in summary, you, you, you guys are, are saying always just pay the premium for the fast fee to make sure it goes through without that happening. It probably yes. That's that's probably like yeah. the the best way of uh, of going. What, about I that. mean, yeah, we're not talking a huge percentage difference, are we? If you were to just pay no, 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 no. It's normally like instead of spending like two dollars, you're spending two dollars eighty, or instead of like in this specific case, the fee. In that, short, you think that's worth doing? <laughs> for sure, for yeah, sure. Because okay. like in this specific case, in the example that we just did, the gas fees were like at the start three dollars and thirty one cents. Okay. I increased that for four to four dollars and thirty cents. So I'm paying one dollar more. But I'm saving the risk of losing completely three dollars and thirty cents. Okay, so guys, as as the as the newbie here, uh, I just have a couple of quick questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, if could we go back to the the main screen? Because obviously, you've used this STA as an example. Correct. Um, I, I just want to clarify maybe why you've used that as an example because th there was that huge list of coins. That, Correct. So that the reason why I use this as an example is because that specific token, so this one, is not available by default. Right. So if you want to have words, like... If someone has told you, hey, is this hot buy? And you've looked here and you can't find it. You go Correct. to CoinGecko and you, you go through that process you just showed us. But Correct. But so I would, would, would it be true yeah. to say that the majority of times you're probably going to find the coin that you're looking for on Uniswap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if we're talking about, like, famous uh, projects, for sure they're going to be mm -hmm. there. This is just, like, for, for the pure example, like, for right. whatever reason. So if, if it's a micro cap or a new project, uh, you might have to go through that process you just, you just showed us. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So if, if for whatever reason you get to the point of, like, right. I would suggest to, like, start first from Uniswap directly. But if yep. for whatever reason you don't find the token that you're looking for, Mm. Then just go in on CoinGecko, search that token, and then like click on the pair uh, token name slash ETH through Uniswap. And it's going to okay. like set that pair automatically. Okay. So okay, there, one, there was one, one other issue there that, cut, Mike, that causes stuff to fail sometimes. Hey, Stefano, and that's yeah. a slippage, right? So if you're dealing with stuff that's a little bit smaller, uh, the slippage becomes to be a bit more than like 0.1% or 0.01%. So there's a setting that you can adjust where you can put your slippage up to 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%. And then that will allow the transaction to go through even with a little bit of slippage. But the default on Uniswap, I think, is 0.05%. Yes. So if you've submitted the transaction and the slippage is more than 0 0.5, it'll give you a warning. And you can swap it anyway. And then if in your settings, you can uh, up the slippage tolerance. Right. Yes, so, that, that's more like for, for the people that are basically like buying into a project that, for example, as a market cap of like, or, or liquidity of like $100,000 and they're coming in with $50,000. So but even, they're even, completely draining the pool at that point. Yeah, but even if you start with like a bigger project, if your order is quite large, that's right. slippage that's right. gets to be more. So the bigger your order is, the more chance there is for slippage, even if it is a big project. So you're trying to buy five, six ETH. 
of something, it, sure. even if it is a large project, you'll get more slippage. Okay. So that's something to watch out for. If you're trying okay. it and it keeps failing, then that's why usually is that your slippage tolerance is too low. Right. So basically, in short, MetaMask is the uh, fantastic sort of gateway <laughs> wallet for the projects on Ethereum, many of which you'll be able to find on the, the bigger exchanges. But reasons to use MetaMask and Uniswap are, it, it's effectively just a wallet. Um, yes. you're, 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 you're buying an average of, of prices, you're going to find many projects that aren't currently on exchanges. If you're that, that real hardcore speculator, I guess another reason to use this process we've just shown you is you, those sort of micro caps are, uh, are there. Uh, we're often where we're seeing some of these ludicrous gains. Mm -hmm. uh, well, any well, any so other sort of key points for it? Yes, for, there is. Newbie we need to cover? There is absolutely like the, the, the last step, which is like, if we're going back to like the wallet right now, you can see that the transaction has been confirmed, but I cannot see my token over there. So it's, it's not available. Yep. Now on a Brave browser, you obviously have like this thing that is like add token. On MetaMask is a little bit bigger. Is It works exactly in the same thing, but it's just like much bigger as a CTA. So it's a little bit easier. But what you want to do is basically just like click on add token and you have two options. Either you have search, so you can search for a project that you are familiar, that, that is famous once again. So like Dive, uh, which everybody knows. Yep. But if I'm trying again, and that's the reason why we pick STA for this example, let's say that I'm like typing STA, I don't have it over here. So again, it's so small, it's so specific that the traditional model will not work for that. So what you want to do is go on custom token mm -hmm. and you will have to insert the token contract address. Now, how do you get in the, uh, sorry, the token contract address? is basically like by going on your transaction that has been confirmed, click on view on ether scan. Yep. And then from there, you're going to be able to get the wallet. Sorry, the smart contract address. Now and I'm, I'm not going to show available. that because yeah. like it's going to reveal my, my address and like the form like you can go through a uh, coin gecko also and coin gecko will list the ether scan address of the project. Uh, so right there. See. Oh, there, there, bingo. Yeah. Yes, you're Here's completely scan. right. So you click there. So again, oh, that's that's another finish. option of uh, of doing that. Okay. And that uh, I'm here. Yeah. So here she's on like the the ether scan, um, and I can see that there is contract over here. Yep. So I click on that link just just in case, and up here I see contract and the address. I want to copy that address. So I copy that. I go back on my wallet. I click on add token. I go on custom token, yep. token contract address. I insert the one that I just like put in. It's going to like reveal everything automatically. So the token symbol is correct because it matched the one that we just bought. 18 decimals is normally a standard thing. So no, don't worry too much about that, I would say. You click on next. And there is going to tell you that there it is, 495. Now, uh, a point of that, we bought 500, but like because of the system burns 1% of the token all the time, it burns five tokens. So, so we're ending up with like 495. So this is correct, is the correct amount. So once I'm doing that, I click on add token, and now it appears on my wallet, and it's there. That's it. You bought 25 once, bucks worth of that just then. Yes, correct. Well, I hope you know something about it. <laughs> $25. Well, I always say like use some dollars to learn things. So if I lose them, whatever, it's going to be $25 for tutorial okay. purpose. Very good. Okay. Now, go. when, uh, sorry, one last thing. Yep. When let's say that for whatever reason you want to sell, because obviously at one point you might actually want to exit that position and so on. So what you do is that you do exactly the same thing as before. So you go back exactly on that page where you were uh, at the beginning when you were purchasing. And yep. the only thing that you're doing is click on this little arrow over here and it's going to swap the system. Right. So at that point, you are from two. And so you can write like your 495 tokens because that's what I have. For just click max. 
Y yes. Well, that's, that's not that's, that's not particularly great uh, UX there, is it, or UI? Uh, well, it, it it works. Like you, we know you now, like, but I I wouldn't have thought to have done that. Well, I guess you'd figure it out eventually, but. Okay. Now, obviously, you, it, it works like in the same way. So if you have like a famous token that you want to sell, once again, you have the full list over there. Mm. But if you don't have that full list, if you have like that specific token that you don't know about that you cannot yeah. find over here, then you need to go like for that process. Okay. But if it's a famous one, just click on the, on the bottoms that like the UX shows you and, uh, and it's pretty straightforward. Okay. And then also what's good to see there is where it says STA per ETH, right? If you click that thing it'll break down the price for you. Yeah, but you need to search something first. Well, you just hit max, right? I just like putting one, just in. No, well, if you hit max, then this way you can see if you're making money or not. So right now, sure. right? So you paid 0 0.01, right? So you're down 5% right now, right? Possible, yeah. With your, Could be. And then it, if you f click that little uh, thing again, so it gives you the price STA per ETH or ETH per STA. Mm -hmm. which is more like the exchange pricing. Yes. So, I mean, for me personally, when I'm doing it, I like to purchase in uh, like 0.25 blocks of ETH or 0.5 or one, because then that way it's really easy to see if you're making money or not, as opposed to like keeping track of the token price and how many tokens you have. You just keep it in your base currency. You put 0.25 in. You already you told us, Jordan, you're up 22X. We know you're, we know you're, you're, you're donning it. Hey man, I'm just helping you guys out here. Just easier, like little Uniswap tricks, right? <laughs> or you can put yeah. in 2.345678 and take track on a Google Sheet or whatever. <laughs> Which is a lot harder. When yeah, you got true. 50 shit coins going at the same time, you just remember, okay, I put 0.5 in this one, 0.25 in this one. You have 50 Much shit easier. coins? No, I got about eight going right now on Uniswap, I think. Just on Uniswap. Right. Okay. Um, how, so do we? Do you guys think you've done a good job of explaining uh, to a newbie how to get involved in some of these projects? I think you I, have. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing that like, we didn't cover, and that's obviously the homework for whoever is interested on, on jumping on that, is whatever project you want to pick. Um, again, if it's a famous one, you have your method. If you, for whatever reason you don't find the token that you're looking for, just use CoinGecko and that's it. Okay. Yeah, that, I'm, I mean, in my group that we have, we have lots of new people and the stuff they're always running into is the gas fees causing problems and finding the token addresses, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. So Absolutely. those are the two big things. And that CoinGecko trick is a good one. I like that stuff model. So <laughs> I'll be selling my uh, solid gold and platinum Bitcoin necklace to uh, come play the shitcoin game, Johnny. Hey, dude, turn it, it, turn it, turn it into an NFT. You can uh, <laughs> put that on your MetaMask as well. Never That's sell. true. Um, okay, guys. Look, I, I, I think that was pretty good as a as an intro to uh, to, to what it's, what we're going to do in the next show is actually show you how you can take a return. Uh, not the appreciation and the, the, the value of the token, but in the in actual interest on, on many of these. So uh, make sure you come back for that show. That'll be uh, with you tomorrow, Sunday latest. And we'll probably, uh, I, I think there was a little debate going with, with you boys. We're going to be hosting some of the founders of some pretty interesting projects, the three of us and a founder. And I can tell you immediately, it won't be a shill show because the guys have already disagreed on uh, on the first one we've looked at, which I think is fantastic. As a viewer, where you know you 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 want an honest appraisal from from a panel, and that's what you'll definitely get from us. Um, so we are going to have a look at how to use these tokens. We're also going to have a look at what Jordan considers a a key key token in the space, and that's uh, Chainlink. Um, so make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be in our next show. And if there was anything that confused you on this show, look, put a comment below. We're, you know, we're looking to hear from you guys. Get involved. Um, we're also tokenizing this business, as we mentioned in the previous show, via Stefano's comp company, Corporatio. Uh, the link to that is below, so you can check that out. Uh, and we'll, we'll be doing that next week. So exciting times ahead. Thanks very much for your time, guys. And we'll, we'll look forward to having you back here tomorrow to, uh, to look at how to actually 
get that return and we'll uh, we'll spark it up a bit with this, with some debate on uh, on chain link. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brilliant. See you all soon. We hope you uh, you learnt something. Please comment, let us know other things you'd like yeah, to talk about. See you in the next show. Thanks very much. Guys.